Welcome to Reckoning Life Pathway, a program where our guests reckon their life narrative, where our guests reckon their life struggles, their life stories to motivate and inspire those who have given up out there. John Paul, the, the, John Paul George Rea was homeless and lived out of his car and advised entrepreneurs that re rejection will come their way, but they should never give up. In life, no matter the struggles, never give up. With me today is a learned historian, a lecturer in the University of Boya, Faculty of Art, a lecturer in history, Mr. Lalo Enes, who is about in few days to defend his PhD in the University of Barmenda. Very soon he will become a PhD holder. He has been teaching in the University of Boya for a while now. Welcome, Mr. Lalo Joseph. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Brucey. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, uh, listeners. I hope that through this program I'll be able to contribute uh, uh, my own, you know, little uh, you know, impact to society and uh, help in forging ahead in terms of nation building in my own way. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much, sir. You are highly welcome. This is a program that you'll be narrating your life sto stories, your life milestones, where it started and where it, you are heading to, whether you are already fulfilled or not. Uh, who is uh, Mr. Lalo Enes? Well, Mr. Lalo Enes um, is a Cameroonian um, from the Southwest region, on your division, from a humor joke. Um, I'm a Christian, simple, frank. Wow. Uh, you get to know. In fact, that is me in, 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 in brief. That wow. is Lalo. Wow, that's very nice, sir. Simple, brief, meaning that you are, you are daring. Uh, so, can you explain to us uh, your early childhood experiences? Oh, well, as a child, I was born in the village, in a subdivision called Babong. And uh, it's a village which is about 50 miles, 50 miles uh, away from Mamfi, the, the divisional capital. Uh, that's where I started my primary school. Um, and as a child, I am being the only child to my late mother. The only child? Yeah, the only child to my late mother. Mm, I felt I was treated in a very special way. Uh, my mom was very strict. And uh, I think um, through her rule as a child, when I was a child, it gave me uh, the stamina to forge ahead with life. Okay, so uh, yeah. I want to ask uh, whether there were any early child, especially parenting, looking at your mom being a single mother. What were some of the difficulties or the challenges that your mother faced in raising you up? Good. Um, well, I was with my mom, but I had to support from my dad, even as a child. Uh, however, at one time, I want to have my dad around me, he, will not, he was not there because he was uh, in his own home, in his village with another woman. And so I missed my dad as a child until when I got to class three, my dad came and took me and I moved and joined my, my father. Looking at your yeah. early childhood experiences, uh, you stayed with your mom at yeah. a certain point yeah. and you stayed with your dad at a certain point. Good, yeah. How did you close the gap for family bonding? Oh, well, uh, when I discovered that, uh, that was a fact, I have to live with that fact. I, want to, I cannot be with, with both of my parents in the same home. I accepted it. And so when my mother is not there, when I moved to my father, I know that she's somewhere. And from time to time, she used to visit me. And uh, I just knew that's a challenge I have to handle, that I have the world ahead of me to conquer. And I accepted that as a challenge. At your early childhood, did you already picturize such challenges? Not until I, 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 I went to secondary school, then I began to, you know, reflect over some of these uh, issues of, you know, having to live either with my father or my mother. Mr. Lalo, yeah. did you have any rejection? 
Mm, not at all. Not at all. I was raised. I was born. In fact, I was raised in my father's home in after class three from my school. I was my stepmother. I was accepted. I interacted with my stepsisters, and uh, there wasn't any rejection as such. Okay, growing yeah. up, uh, so growing up in the village, or uh, in your primary school days. What was the name of your primary school? Oh, I started primary school in government second government primary school, Babong. Uh, until class three, I then I moved to Kimbo, where my father was teaching. He was the headmaster of the school, and I was there until I went through my primary education. Uh, thereafter, I went to government school, Manfi. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll reach there. We'll okay, reach there. Okay, right. At your primary school, sir, when you started your primary school life or your primary school journey with your mother, yeah. knowing fully that your father was not living with your mother, I want to know whether, sir, did you have any dilemma along your way, especially in PTA meetings when your father is supposed to be there, he's not available? How were you feeling? Well, at the time, I couldn't really, uh, I, I was even aware about PTA meetings as, as a child in the early days in primary school. And so there was just no disturbance. I wasn't disturbed as such. I was not disturbed. I moved along with, with time and uh, there, was, there was no problem at that level. Wow, wow, just wow. Okay, those were touching experiences. And I want to say that early childhood is a turning point. Yeah. And it is a time that you shape the personality of tomorrow. And I want to know whether in your primary school days, you had some role models. Yes, I did. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I still recalled um, one teacher who handled me in class uh, five, Mr. Agure Patrick. Uh, Patrick. I've lost uh, contact with him for a long time, but I just hope that he's still alive and pray that someday I should meet him. He was one. At the primary school level. My father too was uh, a teacher in the head of the school. Uh, it's another one. Uh, those two, to me, they, they helped to give me a certain direction. What, what subject was the teacher teaching? Oh, no, in primary school, they, they teach across. It, class, okay. they teach across. What was the best subject in primary school? Uh, my best subject in primary school was general knowledge. General knowledge? Yeah. And today you're a historian. Yeah. How did you transit from history from general knowledge to history, or general knowledge has a background of history? Yeah, you know, history cuts across several disciplines. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I call history the mother of uh, the humanities. In history, you have economic, that's why you hear economic history. We have politics, political history, social history, cultural history, heritage, and all of that. Okay, we will so, okay. Let's uh, just move towards your journey gradually. Okay. Okay, let's now look at when you started living with your father, did you have any family conflict that affected you? Because seeing that you do not, you never grew up with both parents in the same house. Yeah. Were there any family conflict that you faced? Sir? Not at all. Because even as a child, I could adapt wherever I go, and so I didn't experience anything that disturbed me in any way. I was comfortable with my stepmom and my dad. Uh, in the absence of a mother, and uh, they, there wasn't any problem. Uh, but as a matter of fact, that might have, you know, helped to give me uh, the courage and the understanding to face the world in a much, in a much more, in a positive way. Yeah. Did you have? Did you feel or have? Uh, you had any absence? You feel any absence? Like, uh, let me say, the, the love, the empathy of a mother, of your primary caregiver, that is your mother, did you feel that gap living with your stepmother? I, 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 I think so. I did. I did. How did you overcome that? Uh, but I knew that if I get myself worried, uh, I, 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 no, when you're living with a stepmom, it's not the same as living with a mother. And so, I used to feel that, oh, I, I should have been in a house where my mother is there and my father is there. Mm -hmm. However, I, it didn't disturb me. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, it gave me, uh, I saw the need to work hard. I saw the need to work hard in order to be in a position where I would be able to relate with, you know, both parents. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Very good, Mr. Lalo. Yeah. What were some aspects of teachability that you learned from your stepmother 
and those that you learn from your mother that and those that you learn from your father that help to nurture and nature and mature to you in life good um they were they were they were, they were quite uh, a, a number of aspects that I, I i gathered from each of these you know people parented me my mm -hmm. stepmother my mother my father um amongst other things um I was made to understand that uh, hard work pays. Hard work is a key. And uh, I also was made to understand that it's good to be so humble, yeah. uh, humility, and uh, you know, hard work. But those are the pillars that moved me uh, in a later stage to until where I am now. I think they helped build my vision and a sense of direction in, 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 in an enormous way. Were you trained like that to be humble? Oh, definitely. And one of my hallmarks or oh, strength is that I'm humble. Okay, so uh, looking at yes. uh, looking at nature, no, nature, nurture. Okay. I want to ask whether the personality you have today was it mostly influenced by the environment called nurture, or by biological influences? Well, I want to think that both factors contributed. Because you, you grew up in different neighborhoods. Yes, yes. yes. I want to see whether which of this uh which of these ingredients of nature or nurture greatly influence your personality to you? um both factors but if i have to you know quantify uh, i want to think that it's the environment in which i grew um i have moved yeah i've moved even beyond the borders of this country to neighboring nigeria uh, in search of uh, you know knowledge you know at a higher level. Wow! And so the environment uh, I've had the experience of living not only in the in in, in my where I was born. Let's look at your childhood yeah. experiences, the two environment that you 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 stayed. Okay. Which factor influenced your personality today? Okay. Was it your friends or peer pressure at that time? Were you influenced by ne the neighborhood? Were you influenced by your friends? Were you influenced by your family members? Were you influenced by the neighborhood or by the culture in which you live? I want to think that uh, I was not that inclined to friends that to the extent that they would influence me. Because of your single parenting? Uh, I was not. Yes, I was not. I, 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 sh I should say the environment, um, perhaps neighborhood, but not peer. I didn't go after you know, friends that would you know, influence me in a way that uh, I can shape my thinking now. Okay. I, I was a person that was withdrawn a little. I was an in, I should say in person. I was not speaking out as a child. At what, age, at what age did you start your primary school? Oh, I guess I started at the age of five. At the age of five, you started your primary yeah, school? Yeah, at age of five. You had your first school at what age? Uh, I had my first school when I was, uh, I think, if not 12, 13, I think 13 or so. That's good. Yeah. And then now, when you had your first school, what was the next stage of your life? Oh, when I had my first school, uh, my, I enrolled, my father took me to government as to Mamfi. As, as a matter of fact, I passed the common entrance, and uh, I, I, I enrolled into Form 1 in government as to Mamfi. Uh, that was in 1989. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. When I went to Form 1 in government as to Mamfi. Exactly. And uh, I was there until I got to from five, after five years, I wrote my ordinary levels. Okay, so looking at when you transit from primary school to secondary school, so uh, you started your from one at mm. a tender age. Yeah. I want to know the subjects you did, uh, you passed at the ordinary level, and the subject that you passed at the advanced level, All and right. your models in secondary school. Good. Um, I, of course, I, I passed uh, history, ordinary levels. Economics, geography, literature. Uh, I, I had six papers. Uh, what again? Economics, history, geography, literature, English language, and the uh, English literature. So you are art inclined. I was art definitely. I was Who art was your, okay, can you name to us some of your models in uh, secondary school? Yes, I can. I can. Uh, amongst them is um, Mr. Aringan Walters, he was teaching history. Mm -hmm. We were young, uh, you know, just left the university and it was, uh, you know, recruited. And now see why you're a history lecturer. Yes, yes. You, there was also Mr. Uh, uh, Chano Christopher of Pleasant Memory. Yes. 
Yeah, um, I think those two pushed me and inspired me. Of course, there was also um, Mr. Tali Benson. Tali Benson? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Tali Benson of Bali? Good, yes, yes, yes. And yes. Mr. Tali Benson, Mr. Tali Benson taught me history. Good, good. In a, he taught me history in Gomer High School, but for good. a very great historian. Good, good. Good. History. Those are the people who shaped me and pushed me towards a part of history. Wow, just great. As just a matter great. of fact, I remember in Lower Seat when we wrote uh, certain exams, uh, Mr. Tali had told the, the, the class that he marked my script. He went to my school and he didn't know the marks he gave me. Exactly. And so he gave it to another colleague to score me. Brought the paper to the class and asked, I mean, asked somebody to read what okay. I wrote. Uh, but in his what, what was the subject matter on it? Um, I can't, it has to do with, it was, it was a question on Cameroon history. Okay. And at the time, that was when there was this, uh, the beginning of emphasis on Cameroon history. Exactly. Before that, you know, it was not really emphasized in the in, in, in the curriculum years at the time. And so uh, the way I addressed the question, it met his expectation, and so it was to him, it was a wonderful, you know, you know, so you know paper. So what were the aspects that you admire from your history teacher in secondary school, Mr. Tali Benson? Good. Um, one, he's, um, he's very, you know, he's very um, eloquent. Eloquent, oh, yes. Yes, he's, he's hardworking. Yes. He's simple, and he, he, he inspires. Okay, yeah, he's look, at the, look at your camera, sir, and advise the Cameroonian youths out there who want who, who love history and can make history something sustainable for them to have a job that can be helped to solve real life problems because many a times students see history as a subject that is they don't see a lot of future in history but you who have gone through history from secondary school to high school to university to phd how can you advise our youth to see that history is a subject that can be emphasized, that can be encouraged to solve real life problems? Good. Um, you know, history. Um, Look is, at the camera and tell them. History is a singular subject that you know takes us, you know, memory lane. We go back to the very beginning of things. And it gives us an idea on the dynamics of society. Uh, apart from that, it's, it is a subject that uh, builds us towards a career in life. And an understanding of history, its substance, at higher levels, will help you to put bread on your table. History is not just a matter of facts and dates. It has to do with a whole comprehensive historical experience of human race across the world, in Africa, in Cameroon, in the village, history you know, covers the whole space. And there is history in any area that you look at it. And so, to us, sir. and so, students should see history as a subject that can help them to sustain themselves professionally, that can help them to bring insight into some of the unknown things about a society. Uh, it's, in fact, at higher levels, we can use history to solve problems. As a matter of fact, you know that um, in order to solve conflict, let me take the case of uh, the Cameroon uh, Nigeria conflict over the Bakasi Peninsula. Exactly. You know, exactly. You, they had to go into record to see how uh, the arrangement were made by the British and the Germans along the borders in order to ascertain. The Who Green Accord. Okay. Exactly, yes. yes. So history is the model of disciplines and is very useful to the youths, to the old, to men, to women. Okay, so give, uh, explain, narrate to our youths about five points that can help them, especially those who have gotten their GCE this year. Okay. What can motivate them to go to the university and do history like you who will be defending your PhD in history in Baminda University in a few days to come? Um, um, as a matter of fact, the Department of History, what I hear in Boya or in Baminda, is very solid. I can tell you. I, I did my first degree in history in UB. We'll come there. I just okay, want you to encourage our youth out there. Good, good. Yeah, we, we have a staff that is welcoming. Exactly. A young staff. Headed by Professor Khan Kui, who is very open, simple. Wow. And uh, all of us are there to welcome them and to direct them wherever they have problems. And so they What are the share. areas in history that are very aspiring that you did, that you think that some of our youths 
cannot tell you. Good, good, good. I had particular interest in economic history. Uh, I don't know for what reason, but perhaps it's because it, it, it helped us to understand how man has tried to survive using nature, trying to put, you know, the different factors of production in order to satisfy human needs. Exactly. And to have particular interest in economic history. However, the other areas, political history, social history, cultural history, are equally very enriching. Okay, you deal with economic history. Does that deal with economic problems and how they can be uh -huh. solved historically? Exactly. That shows how man has been able to solve his problems in the past, okay? The difficulties, the challenges, and how man tried to mitigate the challenges that wow. face society in order to satisfy his wants. Like, the, the like we, are, we are facing the dreadful COVID-19. Can oh. you say that, can, the, can history, can we look at the undertones, the underpinning of history, to say that this historical moments or this historical era can you, as historians, change our economy in terms to boom, despite the fact that we're in depression and in, de in depression and pain? Yeah, in a way, our uh, historian has a lot to offer to society, especially at time, during times of challenges. Exactly. Uh, in that, um, we have seen depressions okay. Okay. before 1929. Exactly. And we have seen how the world tried, you know, to come out of it. Exactly. As a, a, a historian who is worth the name can direct your attention to those epoch in human life where there was challenges and the sort of things that were done. Remember, after, after the Second World War, Europe was down. Of course, America came in with One, progress. Okay, Europe was down. Good. America was down. The world was down. You, as an economic historian, how did you, how, looking at your milestones, how do you think that the world can recover after pain? It's possible. It just calls for solidarity. Solidarity beyond the national borders. Exactly. As a matter of fact, no single nation can handle, you know, cross-border challenges like this one. COVID-19 knows no borders. It knows no personality. And so, one way of solving it is by what? Enhancing the platforms or the institutions that, you know, that, that try to address problems beyond the nation. Exactly. Global institutions. Global institutions. Okay, so the names, yeah. that's, very, that's very important. I wanted you to give an insight for our youth because your life stories will motivate them. So now, sir, I want to look, as you are growing up from a single parent, I want to ask you, sir, did you face any life rejection? Oh, I want to ask, put it this way. Okay. Did you have any life regrets of doing history? Not at all. On the contrary, I'm very happy, very satisfied. In fact, if I had to start all of us, I'll go to history. Really? Because history has given me a lot. Like? And for instance, I, I mean, I sustain my family because I'm teaching history in university. I read history, I'm teaching history. As a matter of fact, I know that I'm not yet where I'm supposed to be. Yes. History is going to take me are you a beyond the class. Are you a satisfied man? Oh, I, I, I'm still hungry. I, I, I know yeah. I'm, I'm somewhere, but I'm still hungry for more. I, I, have not, I haven't reached where I, I, I'll be. Because of history and because of my ambition in life, I'm going to go beyond the clouds, God willing. How will you do that? Um, the, the secret is simple, uh, hard work. It's hard work. There is no magic wand. Hard work. Apart from hard work, what are some of the indicators that has helped you to be who you are today? Oh, the indicators, my, my character, like I said, I'm humbled, willing to learn, um, hungry, um, you know, I have respect for my colleagues, even my students and those around me. Uh, those are some of the things that I think that with God, I would move and move and move and no man can stop me. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, our viewers can send messages on the number 653-996-877 to get inspiration from... Our guest of today, Mr. Lalo Enes, uh, a, a university don who have been teaching in the University of Boya for about uh, more than eight years now. Very pushful, very inspiring, very encouraging, very motivational. A man to reckon with. He has been reckoning his life uh, challenges, his early cha li life challenges that were very difficult. He's, he's a lot of life difficulties. And after the jingle, We'll return back.